Um, my name is Fatima, and I am a feminist and a writer um, and an activist. Uh, so I'm supposed to talk on about feminism and why it's relevant. And before I came here, I had prepared like some notes. You know, I was really excited to have this talk. I was really excited to share my experience with you guys. And in particular, I was going to share um, a story or an experience that I had on Wednesday. It was very traumatizing for me. Um, I was attacked on my streets by some, some random guy, you know, I was just like walking, he grabbed my arm, he was asking to know where I live. And I was really scared, I was very scared to tell him. Because, I mean, I'm not about to tell a random man where I live. So it was a very terrifying experience for me. And in that moment, I felt very powerless and very helpless because there was really nothing that I could do. Um, I didn't know if I should shout, because sometimes you shout and nobody nobody cares, like nobody listens to you and whatever that will happen to you will happen to you. I didn't know if I should fight, but I didn't think I was physically strong enough to fight with a drunk man in the streets. And so that was a story that I was going to share with you. But then on my way here, the kind of street harassment that I experienced on Wednesday, that made me stay at home for the next three days. So since Wednesday, I haven't been out of my house by myself because I just didn't want that kind of encounter again. And then the same thing happens today. At Kaneshi, you know, the truck truck mates, and you know, they're just trying to hold your arm, grab you, oh, come here, come here. But then it's an invasion of my space, it's an invasion of my body, and it's an invasion of, of my personal privacy. But a lot of times, people don't really understand that. People don't understand that when you sexually harass a woman, or when you just randomly cut call a woman on the streets, it counts as a form of violence. Nobody knows. People don't understand. And I know that this experience is not something that I'm the only one who faces. I know there are so many women around who encounter the same issues. As a matter of fact, violence is so prevalent that one in three women will experience some form of violence, whether it's sexual, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's verbal. They're going to experience that at least once in their lives, at least. And that's twice the rate that men are more likely to encounter or experience violence. So, what is violence against women then? Violence against women is defined by the United Nations General Assembly as any act of gender-based violence that results in or is likely to result in physical, sexual, or psychological harm or suffering to women. And this includes threats of acts of coercion, threats of deprivation of liberty, and it can happen in either public or private spaces. So basically what this definition means is that when you do something that is going to cause harm to a woman, whether it's physical harm, whether it's sexual harm, or whether it's mental, it's classified as an act of violence. And sometimes you don't even necessarily have to commit the act in itself, even by threatening somebody. So when you tell a woman that if you don't sit down and rape you, it counts as violence. But people don't really realize it and we don't really like think about it that much. But even sometimes simple things like I'm trying to walk out of the door and then you stand in my way and you block my way. You're, 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 you're invading my space, you know, you're, you're, you're invading my freedom to walk out of that door. It also counts as a form of violence against women. And so some forms of violence against women include sexual violence such as sexual abuse, such as rape and marital rape, sexual harassment, other forms of violence against women also include female genital mutilation, virginity testing, that's when, you know, they want to decide if you're a virgin or not. And it's called a two-finger test that you just try to, like, you know, insert the fingers to check if you, your hymen is intact. It's a form of violence. People don't recognize that. Gender-based discrimination. So, passing comments like, you can't do this because you're a woman, counts as violence. Um, tra trafficking women into sex work, forced sex work without their consent, counts as violence. Sharing naked pictures of women on the internet with your friends or your group chats or whatever, it also counts as a form of violence against women. It's actually called revenge porn. You date a woman, she sends you news, you break up and because she wants to embarrass her, you leak the news online. It counts as violence and it's bad. Then the other two more, most severe forms of violence is anarchy killings, where women who have been raped before marriage are killed because by virtue of the fact that they've been raped, it's believed that they've brought this honor to their family. And so they kill you in order to reclaim the family and back. It counts as violence. And the last one is femicide. 
which happens very frequently, usually in intimate partner relationships. You have your, your, your girlfriend, you have a fight, you know, you, you verbally abuse her, you physically harm her. Sometimes it can result into death, and that also counts as a form of violence against women. And I think that it's really important that we're having this talk today in this particular climate because we are in the 16 days of activism, which is um, an annual campaign to end violence against women. It's a global annual campaign. It starts from the 25th of November and it ends on the 10th of December. And so all over the world in, 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 in developments, organizations and NGOs around human rights bodies, everybody's like, you know, campaigning to bring an end to violence against women. But then why does violence okay? We, it's easy for us to say things like, oh, violence occurs because women women are loud, they don't mind their business, they don't listen, if you don't listen, you get beaten. Like it's things that people say all the time. But then it's rooted in something far deeper than than what people really realize. And violence against women is usually rooted in in unequal and um, power imbalances between men and women, there's a false assumption that men, by virtue of, of their gender, are inherently superior to women, and women, by virtue of their gender, are inherently insubordinate humans. And so, because these um, this ideas um, prevail, what happens is that there are going to be gender norms that push women to do certain kinds of things and that push men to do certain kinds of things. Of things. And this causes um, power imbalances. And so women usually don't have as much power. And that's why I can be walking on the street and someone thinks that just because I'm a girl and I look nice, he can grab my arm and say, hey, give me your number. I wouldn't do that to the next person on the street because I'm afraid. Apart from the fact that he may be physically stronger than me, there's also the bit where people will say, you're a bad girl, why are you touching the man? But nobody ever asks when it's the other way around, why did you invade his space, right? And so it's very important for us to be, to be aware of all these dynamics. But even more than that, there's actually a system that perpetuates this kind of behavior, a system that allows men to behave in the way that they want to behave without necessarily being held accountable as opposed to women who behave the way they want to behave and they face a lot of a lot of stigma and questions and all of that and that system is called the patriarchy and the patriarchy is defined by the african feminist forum as a system of male authority which legitimizes oppression of women through political social economic legal cultural religious and military institutions Patriarchy perpetuates the idea that men are inherently superior to women, even though every field of academic knowledge disproves this. But patriarchy also, what it does is that at the expense of women, patriarchy prioritizes men's access and their control over resources and privileges, both in public and private spaces. How do we see this manifest? We see it manifest in things like, oh, girls like pink and boys like blue. Girls should play with dolls and pots and pans, and boys should play with cars and, and machines and do like you know rigorous activities. And so when you raise children up in that manner, what happens is that by the time they grow up, women have already been socialized into becoming subservient, not taking initiative, not not learning how to solve problems for themselves. But men on the other hand have been raised to be more to be more aware of themselves and they've been empowered also to be able to take up um, important roles in society like leadership like like political and um, like political um political rule you know and things like that whereas women it's like oh because you're a woman it's best for you to you know stay in the house and support your husband and all of those things and so that's so and that's the way that patriarchy sort of perpetrates continues to perpetrate violence against women. But even more than that, what people also again fail to realize is that even though patriarchy privileges men's access and men's power, patriarchy is also very harmful to men in the long run. Because patriarchy dictates certain standards of masculinity for men. So in the patriarchy, we hear things like, oh, men don't cry. Oh, men are not supposed to show emotion. Oh, men are not supposed to ask for love, or you know, like oh, please, you know, men are not supposed to to show any form of weakness. Men are not even supposed to show affection towards other men, and it's really harmful because now you're, you're I mean, the world is chaotic. Sometimes you, you, it's important for you to allow yourself to be vulnerable, but because patriarchy has all these very stringent standards of masculinity, 
it, it inhibits the way that men are able to you know, express themselves in the way that they want. And there's a consequence from it, right? Because men who are unable to meet the standard of the standard of masculinity that patriarchy has set, they're usually called all kinds of names, Kujibisya, you're effeminate. Sometimes they even say you're gay. And it's, it exposes you to, to public humiliation, it exposes you to violence, people are told not to respect you because you're not man enough. So patriarchy then, in the long run, is harmful to everybody. And as much as it prioritizes men's power and men's access and men's control, it's still harmful to everybody in the long run. And that is why feminism then becomes important. Because the goal of feminism is to bring an end to patriarchy and to dismantle other systems of oppression. So particularly for African women, the way that patriarchy manifests, it doesn't only manifest by itself, it also pollutes with other systems of oppression to commit violence against women. So for instance, the intersection between patriarchy and race. Black women are more likely to face violence than black men. Black women are more likely to encounter violence than white women. There's also the intersection between patriarchy and class. So black women are poorer women are more susceptible to face violence. And because they don't have the, the financial means to even escape situations of violence, you realize that there's so many women who are in situations of intimate partner um, intimate partner violence, they're facing abuse in their relationships, and they have nowhere to go because you can't go to your family because they'll tell you that, oh, as a woman, you have to endure. So even if he beats you today, tomorrow he'll do something nice to you, so endure. And so then they stay in the abuse and they endure knowing that they have no way to they have nowhere to turn to because they don't have they don't have um, a means of livelihood. The husband is the one taking care of them. So if he's giving you money to eat, you have to do everything that he says. Another way that patriarchy pollutes another way another intersection that patriarchy um perpetrates acts of violence against women is through capitalism. So again capitalism says that all oh, men are more men are more responsible um, men are natural leaders, and so it's, it's, it translates to the workplaces where men are able to get promotions like at a faster rate than women, women because women have to work twice as hard to prove why that to prove why they're eligible for a promotion because sometimes they'll tell you that oh you're a woman you're going to marry soon and when you marry you're going to get pregnant and then you're going to to ask for maternity leave so we just rather have you stay in this lower position than you are so you realize that a man and a woman can enter an organization at the same level at the same time and the man rises above the ranks and the woman still you know stays down below and again it still brings us to that same intersection of class and capitalism because now the higher that you are on the ranks of the corporate ladder, the more money you earn, the more power you're able to amass. And women, on the other hand, still stay where they are. They're not able to make more money, they're not able to get power, they're not able to protect themselves, and they're more susceptible to violence. And then finally, there's also the way that patriarchy um, intersects with white supremacy, right? So we don't always think about the influence that colonialism has had on us, and we don't think about the way that it has particularly influenced women. So standards of white, so white supremacy um, sort of sets standards of beauty for women. So for a woman to be considered beautiful, you have to be slim, but with some curves at the right places. You have to be not too dark because then they'll call you blacky or you're like a hole or whatever. You have to you have to perform femininity in a certain way. If you're a woman, you have to like always you're expected to always be in makeup, you're expected to wear high heels, you're expected to just like do feminine things, right? And there are some women who don't meet the standards because they're fat, because they're very dark, because they're a bit masculine in the way that they present themselves. And these women are again more susceptible to violence. Because you can you can be a fat woman walking on the street and say, try to shout you, you're bushy, you're bushy, you're bushy. You know, and we don't think of the ways that this kinds of behavior affects women. But it's 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 not nice. If every single day that you walk on the street, some random man is shouting all kinds of things at you, at you. he has no idea what you've been through, he doesn't even know if the reason why you're fat is because you're sick and your medication that makes you fat, has not, he knows nothing about your life, but then you're susceptible to this kind of violence again and again and again. And so what feminism does is to end the patriarchy, right? And to dismantle all these other systems of, of oppression that the patriarchy could lead to it to make lives difficult for women and girls in the society. Feminism is not interested in picking fights with individual men or women. You know, uh, unlike the way that we're led to believe, oh, feminists 
and man haters, feminists that this, femi feminists that that. Feminism has no business with men. Feminism doesn't care about you as an individual man. What feminism is interested in is there's a system that allows, that makes women to face inequality. There's a system that makes women to face violence. How best do we solve this problem, right? So what feminists, so feminists ask questions like, how is this problem that women are facing? How is this a structural problem? What are the systems and the institutions that are perpetuating the inequality against women? Feminists ask, how do we remove the barriers that prevent women from being able to participate in society, from being able to access their fundamental human rights? Feminists says, how do we solve this problem so that women can live a better life and can feel safe in society? So what is feminism in itself then? I think from what I have said, you have an idea of feminism, but feminism is often also described as a range of social movements, political movements and ideologies that share a common goal to define, establish and achieve political, economic, personal and social equality of all genders. Throughout history, feminists have fought against different things. They fought against discrimination of women. They have pushed for women's right to vote and women's right to be voted for. They have fought for women's right to own property. They have fought for women's right to be able to access abortion services and reproductive health care. They have fought for women's rights to be able to get equal pay and maternity leave. They have fought for women's rights to be protected from domestic violence and rape and for women to be able to sue their abusers, to sue their harassers, to sue their rapists and get the justice that they deserve. But in order for us to understand why feminism is still relevant today, we need to look back to our past. Before the coinage of the word feminism in itself, the word feminism as we know it today, African women have already been resisting patriarchy and gender inequality while fighting for inclusion and social justice. African women played significant roles as revolutionaries before colonial, colonial, colonialism, during colonialism and even post-independence, African women have been fighting for women's liberation. Pre-colonial African women, before the arrival of, of the Europeans, to, to Africa, pre-colonial women held leadership roles. They were often involved in politics. They were able to represent themselves legally. They were involved in economic processes of distribution and, and, and production. So we have the famous example of Yasan to a queen of Ejusun, who led the Ashanti rebellion against British colonialism to defend the Golden Stone. So with the advent of British colonial rule in the late 19th century, African women have been mobilizing in different ways to protest against unjust behaviors laws and policies. There's also similar examples of Mekatili Wamenza of Kenya, who also led a rebellion against the British colonial administration in Kenya because they were trying to force, they were trying to get free labor from, from Kenyans and then force them to pay, um, to pay colon, a colonial tax. And so she was the one who led the people to fight against the British government. But also even in South Africa, there's a long history of women's involvement in, in, social, in social justice and equity. So as of 1958, when the apartheid government passed a law where black people were required to have a pass to be able to enter certain parts of Africa, it was the women of Pretoria who went on a march to the front of the, of the colonial building and they got a fight to the police, they burned some of the things, there was a whole riot and then they, they had to scrap that law. There's also the Igbo Women's War of 1929, again, where Igbo women in Nigeria rallied together to fight the British colonial government because they had implemented unfair tax policies against the people. So right up till today, this shows us that there's been a long history of, 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 of women's rights and liberation struggles in political society. But we still haven't gotten to the stage that we need to get to because some of the issues that our four mothers have been fighting for, the issues still exist today. It's just they exist in different circumstances under different structures and they have different names. What are some of the things that women want that feminism is trying to fight for? Women want to be able to earn equal pay as their counterparts doing the same job at the same time in the same place. Women want to be able to walk in the street at 10 p.m. without fear of being harassed, raped, or killed. Women want to be able to go to the club without being groped or touched inappropriately by strange men. Women just want to have fun. Women want to be able to graduate from university without having to face threats from male lecturers that have to exchange sex for grades. Women want to be able to choose when and where, how and with whom that you have sex without being labeled as a whore. Women want to be able to wear what they feel comfortable in without being afraid that they're going to be raped. Women want their daughters to go to school and live a fulfilled life without being forced into early marriages. 
women want to be able to choose to have kids or not. Yes. Women want to be able to run for office and to be involved in politics without facing unnecessary and violent scrutiny. Women want to live, to make their own decisions, to feel safe in whatever spaces that they find themselves in. Women want a right to self-determination, to be able to make decisions about ourselves, our bodies and our lives without any interference from anybody. We all have a fundamental right as women to be free from violence, slavery and discrimination. We have a right to be educated, we have a right to own property, we have a right to vote, we have a right to earn a fair and equal wage. But these rights are often denied us simply because of our gender, because we are women, so we don't count, because we are women, so we don't matter, because we are women, so we don't deserve to have some of the things that men are entitled to and that the patriarchy. What feminism does is that it gives us the tools to be able to identify some of these struggles that we face. It gives us the ability to be able to critically analyze our experiences and to name my experience and say, this thing happened to me, this is sexual harassment, it's wrong, and people shouldn't do this to me. Feminism gives us those tools to be able to liberate ourselves from the struggles that we face in society. But beyond just giving opportunities to women and girls, feminism's work is much deeper. Feminism involves causing a systemic change to laws and policies so that even at even at the legal level, women have legal rights, the same legal rights that men have. Because even till now, there's some there's some rights that men have that women don't have. For instance, in some countries, if you're a woman, you can't travel abroad without the permission of your husband. There's still some some countries where if you're a woman, you can't even take certain decisions. You can't have an abortion without your husband's permission. We need to be able to do things like that by ourselves. So what feminism does is to work to change these laws and policies on a systemic level. Feminism is, is interested in changing societal perceptions about women and women's bodies. And above all, feminism is invested in the collective, complete and total liberation of all people, regardless of what your gender is. Thank you.